get off the freaking net. And welcome to the Blaze On Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. Alright, I know this is an unusual date to um, record on, but. The last couple of tries, um, the audio cut out. But anyhow, welcome back to Blaze on Nation. Um, this is episode 7, recorded on October 13th, 2013. And I was still unable to get any of these other bumpers I wanted to get at um, prepared. But um, unfortunately, Thursday... Um, I had set it to local recording, which cut off a heck of a lot of audio, and then yesterday I did the same thing again. So now I know why it don't want to work that way. And apparently I have another viewer in. Hmm. But anyhow, so that's how things have been going on there, and I, I guess I'll have this be the, um, uh, journey thing segment that's what I'm looking for and um, Tuesday of last week I did a um, second episode for cookie conundrum although it went glitchy for a little bit at time so I had to edit that but fortunately it worked out and then yesterday I recorded three Let's play episodes for my hardcore 10 minutes of series, which you can find on um, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash jbjblaze. And uh, so I watched the Shaft podcast last night. So, and I was planning on doing a night broadcast for this, but this versus the Shaft, come on. They have over 150 episodes, I only have over 5, so... Plus, I like their show, anyway. But, anyhow, that'll be it for that. Other than it was definitely a surprise to hear who won the Nobel Prize. Nobel Peace Prize. And that I'll get into during the details and the rundown. But first of all, you will see there is something scrolling on the screen under something that says in-stream sponsors. Which, how that works is, um, under the video stream, there is something saying sponsored during the stream. And then under that is the link to which you go to I am raising, and if you pay as low as a dollar, you can have your message and alias or name or whatever you want to have there um, up on the video version. And so for people in the Twitch stream and on the watching the video version, you will see it. And uh, unfortunately for the audio listeners, you won't get what the bloody heck it is I'm talking about unless you... Although, check the show notes, which it will be in. But anyhow, I just wanted to get that out, and let's see here. There it is. Ready, set, go. Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Alright, so on the rundown, I, ha I originally had... About one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine articles and one video, totaling up to ten things to talk about throughout this whole episode. So I decided screw about half of them, as in get rid of half of them, and now it's just four articles and one video. So, in articles we have 
Stupak, who runs the Three Fingers of Politics site. He ranks, and this is actually about a year old, well, more than a year old. He ranks the U.S. presidents from 1900 to present time. Um, and then there is the list of Nobel Peace Prize 2013 contenders. You may wonder, well, who cares now? We already know who won it. But that was also before, because I had that for the Thursday episode before they ever announced it. Plus, so that you know who could have beaten the people who got the prize. Um, next article is the question as to whether um, the Nobel Committee could have their Peace Prize back from Barack Obama, who evidently has killed thousands via drone strikes. Um, and then the last article is a leaked one about U.S. drones killing yay number of Pakistani children in less than yay years. You will find out what the heck yay means in the details. And then the video reveals who won the Nobel Peace Prize. And so after that, well, after this segment will be the details and then shoutouts and, well, yeah, that's the drill. So, anyhow, let's get to details. So, the first one, which is the Three Fingers of Politics. It, I'm not sure whether this is supposed to be January 5th, 2012 or May 1st, 2012. But, um, he says, random, I know, but my dad and I were discussing this, and this is what he came up with. So, that... that in my opinion, that's kind of confusing as he says how I'd rank the presidents. And in the description, he says that his dad came up with all this stuff. So, I guess what both of them came up, possibly. But anyhow, so I'll... He, he ranks them from horrible to great. Um, just a spoiler. There is only one horrible and one great, and I'll do the stuff in between first. So for really bad, and before I get into anything, um, I don't have any um, input into this. I might give some opinion, but I did not rank them. I only know probably about three of what them are good for. And that's so. So, if you're angry at how he ranked the presidents, get mad at him, not me. So, for really bad, we have Lyndon Johnson as destructive. The idiot Carter. I keep on forgetting what his real first name is, rather than idiot, but again... Apparently he is an idiot. Next up is Franklin Roosevelt. Basis for the welfare state, but at least he had a real crisis. Next up is Bad, with Richard Nixon. Paranoid nutjob who gave us press controls and expanded the great society. Woodrow Wilson, just a misguided, I know better than others, idiot idealist. So I guess we have two idiots on this list. Just one who's an idealist, other than being realistic. George H. W. Bush, a.k.a. George W. Bush's father, who squandered Reagan's legacy. And Teddy Roosevelt, yes, he is the mannequin guy from Night at the Museum 1 and 2. And possibly 3 if there's ever a third. And he started federal government activism. Next up is Nebish with Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, Ford, and Taft all as just May. So nothing there really except for May. For OK presidents, Harry Truman could easily side in the Nebish but did a few decent things. George W. Bush. Now I can't really say that I agree that he was OK. Maybe. 
Um, half and half were 4.0 out of 10. As, well, he started the Iraq War and killed many people and whatnot. But, as he is described, morally great but economically a sissy. And lastly, Bill Clinton. I can't rate him a nebbish, but he wasn't really bad. And for the good ones, we have John Kennedy or JFK. He was the last good Democrat, and we'll probably never see another one. And he is also the first, I believe he was the first Catholic U.S. president, and was also the one who got shot in the head in the 1960s, just maybe a few or so years after he just got into being president. And then we have Dwight Eisenhower. He knew better than to mess things up and started some worthwhile government programs, including highway system and space exploration. And finally, I will start with the great, then the t horrible. So great was Ronald Reagan. Apparently no explanation is required for him. And lastly, under horrible, Barack Obama as anti-American and destructive. Honestly, I can definitely agree with, the, with that he is an awful president and the country would likely be better off without him. Um, gun control, NSA, drones, apparently stuff with spending money on bullcrap trying to get involved in the Syrian conflict, etc. And yet, for some reason, in 2009, he won the Nobel Prize. But... I guess he didn't screw up until he finally realized, I am president, I can do lots of things now, including mess up the country even more. Even though George Bush already did that for the whole place. Um, next up we have at the Telegraph the nominees for the Nobel Peace Prize 2013. And we have seven on this article. Seven of how many was it? 259 candidates. And 50 of them being organizations. So we have under the non-controversial -con ones. Because they separate them into non-controversial and the controversial. So we have Dennis Mekwage. Who was a doctor in the Democratic Republic of Congo. He treated thousands of women who were gang raped and tortured during the Civil War. And is a most likely challenger to Malala. He is one of the world's leading experts on how to repair internal physical damage caused by gang rape, and he and his colleagues have treated more than 30,000 rape victims. Um, last year he gave a speech at the UN denouncing mass rape in the Congo and criticized the international community for failing to act, and that's that. Next up is the world famous, she's pretty much an icon here, Malala Yousafzai. And I apologize if I pronounced that last name wrong. And actually with the next three people, so actually more than four. But one of them being a three in one. So with her, she was the 14 year old. Pakistani activist who was shot in the head last year by tele by the Taliban for her campaign to encourage girls to go to school and I believe there was also stuff with having better access to education as well for teenage girls and younger and so on July 20 July 12th, she, on her 16th birthday, she spoke at the UN to call 
for worldwide access to education, and the UN dubbed the event Malala Day. And a last note, Ban Ki Moon, um, who also spoke at this session, described her as our hero. And actually, a very last note on that. Earlier this week, she told, well, I guess that would be last week, because this is a new week. She told the Pakistan radio station, I think I still need to work a lot, in my opinion. I have not done that much to win the Nobel Peace Prize. And, a spoiler, she didn't win it. Next one up is, and these people have incredibly difficult names to pronounce. So, I'll still try at it. So we have Lyud, Lyud Mila, Alex Sehiva, I mean, Ek Yiva, not Hiva, Zvetlana Ganeshkina, and then Lilia Shivanova, which I think Lilia's name is the most easiest pr to pronounce, and what they were nominated for was because of their work or whatever it was, activism, as Vladimir Putin, who is one of the controversial nominees, um, signed into a law, well, bill, that would punish people for homosexual propaganda, and that's propaganda with quotes, and would make it illegal to provide information about homosexuality to people under the age of 18. And... Also, a bill imposing jail terms and fines on those who offend religious believers. So, I guess there's also some... It, I guess it's that kind of funny hate speech thing there. They say, ba basically, hate speech with one thing, but no, you can't hate speech another thing. So, um, so like in Quebec right now, what's going on is... And I'm not sure if it ever passed. I know it highly likely won't. Um, with that, the PQ was wanting to start... Well, they signed a bill or whatever it was to make it illegal to wear your religious symbols in public. Or in other words... They don't like religious people, and they don't want religious people um, advertising their religions in public. And it would make it illegal to do that. And yet, they have these other laws with the Quebec Charter of Rights, because for some reason, they don't follow, and don't have to follow, the Canadian Charter of Rights, even if they are a Canadian province, um, saying that, Hate speech is illegal. So like this one neo-Nazi in Quebec was arrested for his site that promoted hatred towards blacks and Jews. So it's kind of odd. Then again, I suppose it's always something like the um, as hypocritical as Greenpeace activists invading another oil rig over the fact that this oil rig Runs on oil, but how did they get to this oil rig? Their own oil rig, which runs on the same dang fuel. So, what the heck are they coming from? Other than hypocrisy land, or at least if that's the right word to use. And lastly, in non-controversial -contro nominees, we have Claudia Pazzi Paz, and no offense, Matt, but... That is just a fun last name to pronounce. And she is the first female attorney general in Guatemala, one of the most violent countries in Latin America, and she has been heavily influential in the prosecution of organized crime and has campaigned against political corruption and has worked hard to bring to justice human rights abusers and perpetrators to widespread gender-based violence. And the rest I'll just leave out. 
and you and you viewers or listeners um, can find it in the show notes. Now for the controversial nominees, which one of them I've already spoiled, and they list three of them. Vladimir Putin, who was nominated by a Russian advocacy group that um, claims that he actively promotes settlement of all conflicts arising on the planet. So, with the, this most famous um, settlement thing was for Edward Snowden, who he provided, watch me, political asylum or whatever you want to call that. So I just nudged my mic a bit. But, um, basically to peeve off Obama, and actually he has two sides to his controversialness, I suppose so, with the fact that he's given Edward Snowden, um, asylum for having leaked the information um, to prove that the NSA are piece of crap spies that are probably close enough to be, be eh, to being internet pedophiles, maybe even over the phone pedophiles, because for some reason they're allowed access to all the phone information, and then the second half being his bill to pretty much illegalize homosexuality, to sum it up. Although I, I, I suppose I could be too generalized, but it, it's the best way to remember this stuff, you know. Um, next up, the bloody famous Edward Snowden, who was nominated by a sociology professor in Sweden um, for the fact that he helped to make the world a little better, a little bit better and safe, in which, again, he is the one who leaked the NSA documents, proving that they're awful people, in which they had been gathering documents on phone calls and internet activity for Americans and um, English peoples. So not just the U.S., but also the U.K. And lastly, Bradley Manning, who was, or should I say Chelsea Manning, who was nominated by the peace activist Maybreed McGuire for that his or her incredible and disclosure of secret documents to WikiLeaks helped end the Iraq civil, the Iraq war and may have helped prevent further conflicts elsewhere. So those are the nominees, and in my opinion, I'd have, I really expected that probably Edward Snowden, Bradley Manning, or Malala would have gotten it, because, well, Malala, she was shot in the head for believing something that really should be done, because without education, we're all stupid, right? <laughs> but, um... Th that's something that I've noticed as a big problem in the um, third world countries, so like in Africa, with that basically the available the availability of things are lacking. So like with the education and whatnot, and I'm not sure if Pakistan is actually in Africa. I think it probably is, but. Um, and Edward Snowden, um, revealing to the world that the U.S. and the U.K. are being spied on by higher powers, which are being allowed to do their crap skis by their governments. And then Chelsea Manning for his WikiLeaks leak, which was evidently the largest one in U.S. history, and of and again helped stop the Iraq war, which 
I guess, was one of the promises Obama made when he was getting into presidency, but did he really ever help? No. I don't think so. And not to mention, he was wanting to start stuff up in Syria, which would, in the end, have probably U.S. troops killed and absolutely Syrian civilians killed. So not really any help there. But again, that'll be in the show notes. And next up is... Well, actually, I'll get to this right now. Um, this is actually one of the last... This is the last show notes I had. But um, I might as well get into it now. Friday, October the 11th. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, in the end, were the ones to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Which was a surprise to many who had pegged Malala as their favorite. In which they, I guess, worked on stuff to help out in Syria. And I don't remember much from the video, unfortunately, but... If you want to tell me more about what goes on in the video, feel free. And the funny thing is, is this is how Nobel, the Nobel organization, Nobel committee, I mean, got to them was on Twitter, which apparently is an informal way of them to do it, which apparently took quite a bit of time. But, um... They are the ones who won the prize, and yeah, it says right here, the announcement was made early Friday morning with the Nobel Committee, committee stating that they have been awarded for its extensive efforts to eliminate chemical weapons. Although, honestly, I do have the point to, uh, in my opinion, it's not always... I just don't completely agree with banning of weapons. Although, I suppose with some of these things all they're being used for is murder. So like chemical weapons, all they've really been used for is fighting in wars. Or the drones, which have been popular with Obama's operations as well as George W. Bush's, which have been criticized for use in murder of innocent people. Which brings me into this next article, which is also from The Telegraph. And so what this is about is basically reasons as to why Obama should have to give up his peace prize, which he was awarded when he got into presidency in 2009. And so how it opens is tomorrow. Yeah, actually, I'll skip that first part. But, um, of course, most of the previous reci recipients have been deserving, some less so. When Henry Kissinger, for example, was awarded it in 1973, Tom Lehrer, or however it's, however his name is pronounced properly, um, made a witty remark that the prize made political satire obsolete. And so the pointers that they come up with here are that far from ending the adventurism of um, George W. Bush, Barack Obama's predecessor, he surged troops into Afghanistan, bombed Libya, and was only prevented from going into Syria because everybody said, no, stay the heck out of Syria, otherwise you're just going to cause more freaking trouble and kill more people. Um, under his watchful gaze, the Middle East is arguably less stable today than when his presidency started. 
with the civil war in Syria, a kidnapped pre prime minister in Libri Libria. Good lord, that sounds so much like Libra. I think that must have been on my mind, those play skills. But Libya and the revolution in Egypt, and it's been a particularly hard few years for the remaining Christians. And lastly, the drone strikes. So if I bring up my calculator again here, I actually I don't need that, because I remember the results I came up with. So George W. Bush conducted 45 drone strikes as president, killing 477, and Barack Obama with 316 drone strikes, which is 7.02, or I guess just rounded seven times more the strikes Bush did, and killing 2,363 um casualties, which is 4.95 or just about five times as many as Bush killed in his presidency, which this was all tallied up by the New America Foundation, and that the total debt is probably just an underestimate. And they say that the number killed could be as high as 3,404, including 307 civilian men, women, and children. Which, one of the things here I will get into with the next detail, which is the leaked document that suggests that drones killed, and I will get into the next article now, which is the leak which killed 94 Pakistani children in just little less than three years. So those are the frightening numbers that are in these articles. And holy crap, I have seven people viewing. So this is definitely being a nice stream. And which... And here it says, of the 746 people killed in drone strikes over the period of January 2006 until October 2009, 147 of them are described as civilians, and 94 of them shockingly to be children. And you even get to see a picture of, oh, I guess that's their Air Force, maybe not so much of drones. I'm not exactly sure now. But um, this was tallied up again by the NAF, which is a nonpartisan American think tank. Um, and in a recent speech, Obama addressed this high tempo of his drone strike, saying that beyond the Afghan theater, we only target. Al-Qaeda and its associated forces. And even then, the use of drones is heavily constrained. Which... Obviously... Must be an inaccurate statement as... Well, I, I suppose in these numbers, it there could be Al-Qaeda people dead, but it doesn't say anything about that, so... I'm assuming that none of these are Al-Qaeda, so obviously, um, just killing innocent people. Oh, although here it does say that, um, what you mean, that 746 people total, um, that only about over 100 were civilians, so. How many much of the rest, maybe over 600 people, or I guess maybe 590, something around there, aren't civilians, whoever they are. But, um, with that there, 
Uh, honestly, so the Peace Prize is awarded to people who have, so like, the human rights people, um, moving to get people the rights they deserve, and education, and everything else, making the world better basically, or revealing to people that something that isn't right has happened. And yet, one of the recipients, again Obama, has done completely the opposite. Not to mention, like all politicians do, he lied his butt off about, um, about what he was going to do in his presidency including end the war in Iraq which never happened until um crap I lost my train of thought all of a sudden but um crap I really have lost my train of thought but yeah, honestly, in my opinion, he should give up his prize. But anyhow, that's all there is for today. Um, so time for shoutouts. So for shoutouts, I have our sponsor here, Vila4331, um, who one is one of the I am I am raising sponsors pardon me and so I'd like to first of all thank you for supporting this episode even though it's taken me about three trials to get things sorted out right next up um, ffsplit.com is where you can get this lightweight live streaming software called FF Split, I recommend you check it out. Um, I'm still waiting on the on the developers to add in a capability for media files, so yeah. So check them out. Next up, check out a check out just a gaming blog at just a gaming blog, that's B L O G G dot WordPress dot com for awesome news, reviews and more. They had to get the misspelling of blog as someone else took that domain. And lastly, if you need big web hosting space, but you have a low budget, or in other words, don't have a high budget, then go to store.notalic.com. That's N O T L E K.com with store dot above it today, and you can get. Web hosting starting at one ninety nine or two bucks USD per month. Um, again, I highly recommend his service. I'm pretty good friends with him too. Anyhow, um, he was on for episode four, and yeah, he needs some money, so go pay him some money. And don't worry, you won't be alone, because once I get enough money, I will be supporting him as well. But, um, and my last shout out is to all you guys in the chat room. Um, honestly, I really wouldn't have any, um, inspiration to, or aspiration to do this podcast without you guys. And to listen to my smack talk about governments and everything. <laughs> but, um,. I thank you all for coming in. Um, you can follow on for updates on sh future show times at my Twitter, JBJ Blaze. Um, you can find the video version on my YouTube, um, slash JBJ Blaze. The show is also on Spreaker, slash show, slash Blaze on Nation, and our Steam group, The Flippin' Awesome. Which is all one word, and you can actually saw, see all that stuff on the video version. 
But anyhow, I will see you all on Thursday for episode eight, and I will bring in those articles that are missing from this episode. And I just got dinged by my Gmail notifier checker thing, and I will s have a happy Thanksgiving to those Canadians out there, and. Happy early Thanksgiving to you Americans, and yeah, see you all later, and I'm signing out starting now. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes, the flippinawesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes, and to sponsor a future episode.